Mitchell, can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Um, I'm a builder working for the building company in WA. Um, have done for the last 25 years or so. I had guaranteed work with the Broad Building Company, rebuilding and renovating houses all the way from Broome to the Territory border till I was 68 years of age. The setting up of my son by Waypole, the DPP of WA, um, has just thrown everything in the works. So you're currently living in South Australia? Yeah, I've got a house there in the backing of a few government organisations who have seen the transcript and the evidence used to convict my son. So what are the charges that your son got convicted of? My son was convicted of a manslaughter charge after a two year wait for the trial. Previous to that he was in jail on a murder charge with the same evidence, evidence that doesn't exist still to this day. So that was the same case? Yep, same ca ca case. I fought for 10 months to get the murder charge thrown out and um, eventually we did that. So the charge got downgraded from murder to manslaughter? Yes. And what was the incident, what was the incident that resulted in those charges? That's very hard to say straight out, but I'll go this far. Um, the district court judge allowed Detective Senior Sergeant Greg MacDonald to verbal my son in open court in direct breach of section 1552.3 and 2.4 of the Criminal Investigation Act, um, which stops the potential verbaling of a suspect. Okay, so he was charged with the murder of a lady? Indigenous female, yes. Yeah, and what were the circumstances of around that event? The only circumstances that are proven is that they jumped in the car and drove from Perth to Jolton on the evening of the 17th of December 2010. Um, and that's as far as the facts go. Everything else is alleged with um, no evidence to support that allegation from Waypole or the DPP. Now, the um, if your son didn't commit those that crime, somebody else must have. Do you have any ideas on that? I've named this person three or four occasions on the internet and I will do it again right now. The evidence proves Sean Michael Minnie is the murderer. And is he a black fella or a white fella? He claims to be. I'll go that far. Yeah, claims to be a black fella. Yeah. And um, he gave evidence in court? It, the, the evidence that he gave should have killed the trial in the first 15 minutes because he committed perjury. Competent Defence Counsel Simon Freitag did nothing to defend my son. The um, and what do you know about this fellow, Minnie? I've, I've known him. I've known him since he was about five years of age, and um, haven't seen him for a few years. But apparently, he was living in Broome when I went up there, and um, yeah, things just steamrolled from there. And I. Recall you said to me that he's a known drug user? He, he admitted in court that he was um, a drug user who used drugs every other week when he, uh, as a fly-in, fly-out miner. And the um, fly-in, fly-out miners, if they're using drugs, it's usually something that's hard to detect? Yes, methamphetamines. He admitted to, he admitted to the use of methamphetamines on the stand. And it makes them unreliable and unpredictable in their behaviour? Totally. Hmm. Okay. And the has your son had any appeals heard or anything like that? Uh, we, the, the trial was so bad that when we went to the Criminal Court of Appeal, even someone like me knew we had no less than 13 grounds of appeal. Hmm. But instructing solicitor Anthony Martin from Lumlin and Associates took it upon himself to only lodge two grounds of appeal, which was doomed to be, uh, our appeal was doomed to be dismissed because of that fact. Hmm. So the, your belief in your son's in, innocence, it's not unusual for family to claim someone's innocent, on what grounds, forget the legal cases, the legal reasons, the actual evidence and occurrences as, as you know them, why do you believe your son's not guilty? 
Okay. Um, three, of the, three of the witnesses, Tonya come again, Cassie come again, and Jack come again, are the children of an Aboriginal police sergeant stationed in Mollawar, which, which is 90 k's east of uh, Jordan. Sean Minnie and Calvin Farrell are directly related to three Aboriginal police officers in the Jordan police station, Jack Capel, Bobby Pepper and Spider Whitby. So all this evidence was used from children or direct relatives of a police officer against my son. Mind you, all of those witnesses that I just named made three very different statements. Tonya Cummigan in her first statement gave my son a concrete alibi. On the stand she said she didn't make that statement and um, the police must have. So the fellow Minnie, does he have a connection with any of the people who gave evidence? Yeah, Calvin Farrell is his nephew. So Kelvin Farrell again is one of the police aides, is that the case? Or? He's the nephew of those three police aides that are named from Shark Bay. Right, yeah. And the, um, your interaction with the legal system and the CCC in Western Australia, how would you describe that? Anne, Bol Anne Bowles from the Legal Practice Board Complaints Committee um, dismissed our complaint based on the fact that my son hadn't written to her knowing that I've had full power of attorney for since 2011. Um, the Triple C uh, did the same thing. They dismissed our appeal based on um, uh, the law rather than a complaint of corruption. So your interaction with the CCC wouldn't have been an appeal, but a allegation of corruption. Yeah, yeah. Which, which came out in trial. Both the uh, the prosecution forensic expert eventually admitted, after knowing all the facts, that the sample that they retrieved from the twigs from the crime scene resembled a reference sample. Yeah. Okay, and. Um the full name of your son and of the deceased? Uh, my son is Matthew Shane Dodd and the deceased is Shannon Lee Gale Pierce. Pierce? Yeah, P-E-A-R-C-E. -E. Okay, and your son's in Acacia Prison? At the moment he is, yes. Yep, and how long, how long has he served in prison prior to being sentenced and since being sentenced? He, he did 10 years on, the, uh, 10 months on remand on that murder charge and then he's been in since 2012, August 2012. And how long was he sentenced for? He got 10 years. 10 years. So he's done um, almost nearly half of it. Yeah, almost four. Because the judge backdated it one year. Yeah. And what would you like to see happen from here? Well, Expose, expose all of this corruption because um, it goes a lot further than just WAPOL and the DPP. This is um, uh, public defenders who are send, helping send innocent people to jail, yeah. namely Simon Freitag, Sim, uh, Simon Waters and Anthony Martin. Yeah. All right. And is there anything else we haven't covered that you think is relevant? The WA police are paying families blood money knowing that they're sending innocent people to jail, but to make the family believe that the police have got the right murderer. Mm. Thanks for your time. Thank you very much. Cheers.